Hi, I'm Gurinder. Like many university undergraduate students, I've been feeling stressed out and have fallen ill. My symptoms include lethargy, sneezing, coughing, excess mucus production, and a bad headache. I've been feeling ill for more than a week and decided to research my symptoms. <coughs> After narrowing it down to a bacterial or viral infection, I decided it's time to see my family physician. She recommended antibiotics, specifically azithromycin. After completing my entire prescribed dosage, I began to feel better and thought I may have finally shaken this nasty infection. Unfortunately, before I had time to celebrate, I began to feel the symptoms returning. <coughs> I reported back to my doctor who says that she has seen a lot of resistance to azithromycin this past year in Hamilton. I received another antibiotic prescription, but this time the dosage was doubled, and I followed the treatment protocol closely and finished the entire prescribed dosage once again. The bacteria seem to have been responding better this time, but just as I think I'm in the clear, Was my drawing that bad? Yeah, it was pretty bad. To understand why Gurinder's antibiotic treatment was not effective, first we need to know where antibiotics came from. In 1928, Sir Alexander Fleming accidentally discovered penicillin, a substance derived from penicillin mold, which prevented the growth of new bacteria. The new drug was widely used to treat numerous individuals, including World War II soldiers. Fast forward to 1940, the miracle that was penicillin became somewhat less miraculous. Howard Flowery and Ernest Chain took over Fleming studies, and following very promising rodent trials, Constable Albert Alexander began receiving treatment for a bacterial infection that spread from a scratch. Albert was responding well, however, production of the drug failed to meet demand, preventing him from completing his treatment. Upon cessation, the infection worsened and eventually killed Constable Alexander, becoming the first known cause of antibiotic resistance, a crisis that would only spread as penicillin started to be mass-produced. Antibiotic resistance occurs when the bacteria has the ability to survive and grow in the presence of that specific antibiotic. There are many ways a bacteria can become resistant. Genetic mutations are generated each time a cell divides, and if one of these mutations provides an advantage to the bacterial cell in its ability to survive and divide, then this mutation gets passed on to the next generation. Does this sound familiar? Evolution. The same process that led to humans and all known forms of life. Bacteria are able to share their genetic material with neighboring cells in the environment via conjugation. The process of ingesting a plasmid or small loop of DNA and incorporating this genetic material into their existing genomes. Some of these plasmids contain detailed instructions that tell the bacterial cell exactly how to evade death via antibiotics. For example, some bacteria produce enzymes such as beta-lactamase that have the ability to destroy antibiotics. In your body, even a single bacterial cell surviving an antibiotic treatment can repopulate and cause an infection that no longer responds to antibiotic treatment. Now that we understand what we're up against, what can you do to join the resistance? Step one, reduce consumption of meat products that use antibiotics. Many farm animals carry bacteria within their intestines and are fed antibiotics to treat this problem. In the 1940s, growth-promoting antibiotics, GPA, were first discovered and within the next five years this became a common practice among many farmers. In fact, many animals such as chickens have been fed GPA to allow better growth and this has led to decreased costs for chicken for consumers. Antibiotics are added into animals' water or food to help allow faster weight gain. Due to overuse in antibiotics, this has led to antibiotic resistance. When humans consume poultry, this may pose a risk to their health. Step two, try complementary or alternative medicine. 
while megadosing vitamin C has been proven to have no effect, there are a whole host of scientifically supported natural remedies for cold symptoms. Zinc has been shown to support recovery from acute lower respiratory infections and is also protective against pneumonia and diarrhea, a common adverse side effect of antibiotic use. Stress management therapy is similarly effective as reducing both symptoms and length of recovery. Step 3. Eat probiotics. According to Harvard Medical School, probiotics are proven to improve your immune system and prevent harmful bacteria from causing infections. Taking probiotics while also taking antibiotics will help replenish your healthy bacteria that antibiotics get rid of. Step 4. If you are a doctor, ensure that you are prescribing antibiotics only in appropriate cases. A recent study in Canada found that roughly a quarter of all antibiotics were prescribed for illnesses that do not respond to antibiotics. Viral infections are a culprit in this category. A negative serum calcitonin precursors test can help to separate viral from bacterial infections. If we work together, we can stop the spread of antibiotic resistance. Join the resistance!